Hello and welcome back to another episode of My Basic Manager. I'm your host, Captain Betty Man FM, and I welcome you to this Football Manager 2019 experiment where we take Mike Bassett from absolutely nowhere to his dream job as England manager. And where are we, ladies and gentlemen? Because this does not look like familiar surroundings, does it? It does not. If you were here for the last episode and you saw that we went out as Shelburne manager, we quit and we got ourselves a new job. Right at the end, I just showed you a nice little picture of who was the team that we took over. And Mike has got on a plane and he's got away from UK and from Ireland. He's gone to Europe, Southern Europe that is, and he's gone to Turkey. He is in the first division with Osman Lisboa Football Kulabu. There we go. I'm never saying the football Kulabu. It's Osman Lisboa. It's taken me three days to get that one right. <laughs> and we are currently in the League One of Turkey. So there's the Premier League where Galatasaray and Fenerbahce are, and then there's this league, and that's what we're in at this moment in time. As you can see, we are a two-star current ability. Hopefully we can get to two and a half star and hopefully that Mike's reputation and progression will go with this team on his next step going towards that England job. Once upon a time, he will get there in the future. It's going to be a journey. It's going to be a long one as well, but we're going to get there sooner or later. But more about this team. They are from Turkey. They were founded in 1978, so not... Not the oldest team in the world, let's just say that. No fierce rivals, but got a couple of other rivals who I'm not going to try and pronounce for you. <laughs> the media have predicted us to come sixth this season. I did take over with a couple of players that, uh, with a couple of players, with a couple of games to go last season, but they just wasn't worth showing you. So we're going to start from the very beginning of the new season. It is the 2022 23 season, and we've just kicked off. <laughs> Now listen what you all to know that we're all in this together. It's one for all and all for one. Yeah. Get the squad together this afternoon, don't team. I'm going to sack half of them. That's his spirit, boss. And this is how the squad is kind of looking. As you can see, very, very much Turkish player based. And that's the reason because we can only play five foreigners in each starting lineup. So we might as well not have that many. We might as well overload on the Turkish players. And I have had to bring a lot in because this team was not that good last season. I'm just going to show you where we finished last season and it was ninth in the table. I came in and we were 11th and I only got us up to two places. It took a couple of games to get going, but we finally got there in the end. I got rid of some of the deadwood that was in there and I've been able to bring in some decent players as well. And one recognisable face, oh, you will know from Shelburne. And that lad is Mr. Adam Lewis, left-hand side. We are playing the Christmas pudding. I'm taking it with me. We're going to go for it. We're going to change the style of it up a little bit. The formation itself stays as it is. The structure stays as itself. But the actual style of it, the playing style, we're going to change it up. We're going to go for a bit of a rock and roll style football, a bit of heavy metal, gag and press. We're going for it this season. We're going to go for the promotion. Don't really want to be in Turkey that much. So I want to be successful in a very short period of time with these kids. So I'm going for it massively. And we thought, well, why not bring in our best player from Shelburne? And that is Mr. Adam Lewis. And he has signed for us. He's a current four-star ability and a potential four and a half star current ability. He comes on a free transfer from Liverpool, so he'd just been released from Shelburne. His loan had come to an end, and Liverpool let him go, and we snapped him up immediately, and he was very happy to come and join Mike Bassett. And then our next signing, and this is what's going to be quite funny for you, people are going to be watching this series, is that I'm going to have to try and pronounce names now. <laughs> and there's going to be a lot of first names that are going to be pronounced because I'm not very good. Defensive midfielder, this kid is a bit of a backup. I brought him in because, it, for one, he's Turkish. And secondly, we needed someone for that position because we're actually moving a few things around. We don't have to play two centre midfielders. I'm going to show you the tactics in a bit. I'm going to play one defensive midfielder in there. And this kid is Fukan Sakman. Quite easy to pronounce that one, and I'm very happy to bring him on board because he's very good mentals and very good physicals. Not the best technically, but we need him for tackling and running around, and they will do a job. And we haven't actually brought him in on a free. We brought him in on loan from the German Bundesliga. He actually played in this league last season 30 times for Istanbul's bar and did all right, 6.8. So he's going to come in as a bit of a backup for us, so he's, he's going to do a job for us. And I'm happy to have him on board. This is my major loan signing though for this season. It's Manur Merkan. And we're going to go for it, calling it Manur from now on. Uh, he is a Mazar 
Salah, central midfielder, and he's getting better and better as we speak. Those physicals are fantastic. And they've got some decent decision making, off the ball positioning and vision all in the 13s as well. And his technicals are pretty decent as well. Passing, technique, dribbling, all in the 12s. Very, very good for this level. Welcome to the club, Manuel Mercan. Did I say that we picked him up from Schalke? And he actually played in the Super League, the Turkish Super League last season. Picked up a backup goalkeeper. Not the best goalkeeper in the world, but we needed someone that was just, just going to just fill in that position. And he once upon a time got a cap for the under-21s in the national team. So I was happy to bring him on board. It's Okakan Kakia. There we go. That's a good one, Blaine. We'll stay with that one. Goalkeeping ability, not too shabby. All in the high teens. I'm very happy with that. Mental's not the best. Physical's not the best. He is a backup to all backups, and I'm happy to have him on board. Welcome to the club, my son. Third loan signing of the season, and it's Baras Vatamal. And I'm very, very happy to bring this kid on board. He's capped at Turkey under 19 level, and I thought, you will do my son. He does come from the Super League. Basakiaka. <laughs> I don't know. He is a backup. He's not starting games for us. He's only just come back from injury, actually, because when he came over, he had a bit of a niggling injury. But he's got good heading, good marking, good tackling. For a 17, 18-year-old, very, very good. Decent mentals. Physicals could be better, but he will do as someone, if we need someone to come off the bench, he will do a job for us. Welcome to the club, Barras. We've made a lot of long signings, let's just say that. And this is a backup attacking midfielder, Hiram Akar. And he's not bad. He is not a bad player. We've brought him in from... Is it Kasim Ampaza? And I'm very happy to have him on board. Free kick taking 15, which one that stood out for me straight away. And then I was just looking around and he's got decent passing, decent technique. His mentals are pretty decent and his physicals could be a little bit better. For a 19-year-old, capped at under 19 levels, I thought, do you know what? Bring him on board. And if our main attacking midfielder does get injured or gets suspended then this kid is going to do a job. Very happy to have him on board. Welcome to the club, Karim. And another loan signing from Galatasaray, and it's Koran Singal. And this kid is actually our starting central defender. Heading 10, marking and tackling 14. We've got bravery in their positioning. We've got work rate 14 as well. We've got pace and we've got agility in the high teens as well. And I'm very, very happy to have him on board. He comes from, like I said, Galatasaray, where he played a couple of games last season after being snapped up from League One. So I think we've brought in a pretty decent little lad here. He plays at the under-19 level for Turkey as well. And it's definitely what we needed. 18 is going to be good. And another loan signing starting striker. We're going to go Kaká. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that first name. We're just going to go Kaká or Kaká. That's what it's more like. Kaká. But we'll probably shout Kaká. Uh, he's on loan from Frankfurt in Germany. Germany was a very good place because there's a lot of Turkish based players in Germany. So I went and had a look over there and I raided a couple of clubs and got some decent players, like I said, from Schalke, for instance. And this kid is all right, let's just say that he's all right. He's the starting striker for the Turkish under-20s team. That's why I was able to pick him up. And dribbling 13, finishing 13, not too bad. I was quite happy with that. Composure 13, concentration 3. Hmm, not the best. Work rate 8. Hmm, not the best. Rest of his technicals, not the best either. Physicals, okay. He's going to start... But I can't imagine him scoring 20 goals this season. But he could get into the teams with the goals and that'll do a job for me. Another right midfielder and he's a backup right midfielder. Don't get too excited about this kid. Hile Depe. can play across the park. He's preferred for his either. He can play left midfield and right midfield. And that's the main reason why I brought him in. His current ability is three and a half. His potential ability is three and a half. He's 29 years old and he will just do a job for us. I think he'll do a job for us. He's on loan. Welcome to the club, Depe. Ozkan Uzden, and this kid is going to be our starting right back. Capped at under 19's level once again. We've brought him in on loan from a club in the Super League, and he plays as an inverted wing back, which I always kind of like. It's one of those weird positions. You remember Sabawal that played for uh, for Albion Rovers in my early years? Well, he was an inverted uh, wing back, and he just kind of played all over the park. Then just somehow just got back into position. He can play right or left back as well, so he's preferred on either foot. I think this kid has got the potential to be very good. His technicals need to be worked on. His mentals are decent and his physicals are really good for an 18-year-old. We brought him in on loan from Adnan Spor. Everything just finishes in a spore in Turkey. But he is actually from this division. But I brought him in and I think he will do a decent job for us. So welcome to the club, Okan. 
And the last but not least, player that we brought on a free transfer, we've actually brought him in. And he's a backup for our centre midfielders and for our defensive midfielder as well. And I actually think we've brought in a pretty decent player here. He's 22 years of age. I think once upon a time he played for one of the big clubs. Yeah, for Stuttgart. So I'm very, very happy to have him on board. And actually very happy to bring him to this level of football. It says that he's a deep line playmaker defensive midfielder here, but he can play across the park, to be completely honest with you. Right through the middle. Everything's just in the high teens, so I'm quite happy with that. He's an all-rounder. He really is an all-rounder player, so very happy to have him on board. Like I said, he's only just, we've only just brought him in, so he's, uh, he's, he's lacking very much in match sharpness, but uh, give it a couple of games, and he might be a starting centre midfielder for us, so welcome to the club. Umit Gunez. He did release one lad, though, who was very good, and he's ended up in Australia at Melbourne City, but by getting rid of this kid, we made £4,000 available in the kitty for the wage budget and we were able to bring in Adam Lewis as well. Get them all together, I'll give them a team talk. All right, that's right. Come on, lads, back in. All ears, boys, boss wants a word. All right, lads, gather round. Hey, switch that off, son. Right, as you probably all know by now, I'm the new gaffer around here. You can call me boss or gaffer, but I'm not too keen on governor. And any fancy stuff like head honcho, I can definitely live without, OK? Yes. Right, now I'll be working with Dodgy, the coach, who you all know. So when he says jump, I want you to jump. Capish? Capendi? Do you understand? Right. You'll be playing your first game with me in charge this Saturday. So it's up to you to show me what you can do. And I'll be looking for your best performances, because from now on, you're playing for your future. All right? Right, I'm an open-minded man, so if you've got any questions, don't be afraid to ask. This is a two-way street. Uh, could you give us an indication of the type of team tactics and playing formation you're likely to adopt so we can start to think about how to adapt our game to, to best suit your playing style? Who's the joker who's followed to Jason me, Dodsey? Jeremy Boss. He's got a degree from Durham University. Troublemaker, egg. All right, son, just because you've got an A-level. No need to unsettle the rest of the squad. Come on, five times round the pitch. Come on, lift those bloody knees up, Jeremy! And the rest of you, come on, let's get back to work now. Back to work! Come on! That's it! So that leads us on to the squad. And as you can see, we've got a big, big squad. But who are the best players in this squad? Morin Merkan is the best player that we've got there. And then we've got an attacking midfielder called Alexis Aligu. We're going to go with Alexis. That's what we're going to go with. He's a left footer. He's an attacking midfielder. But most importantly, he's a shadow, shadow striker. And that's what I like to see. And he's very good, ladies and gentlemen. 25 years old. Cameroon. He's not an international. He must have played some youth games for him, but apparently not. He was picked up on a free transfer a couple of seasons ago from Nantes in France. Do you know what? He is pretty decent. If I would have had this kid at Shelburne, mwah, he would have absolutely run, run rings around that Republic of Ireland Premier Division. Very, very happy. We'll go composure good, flair, off the ball, passing, technique, dribbling, first touch, all in the high teams, and his physicals are very good. And then we've got our striker, who is an icon at the club. It's Payam. <laughs> <laughs> he is an Iranian international, 30 years old. He's played 14 times for his national team. Oh, he's got the one goal for them. He is a bit of a legend around these parts in Turkey. He was brought on a free transfer from Iran and hoping this season that he can break into the 20 goal mark because he's going to be my star striker possibly up front. And he's only scored one in four so far. So he's not having the best time up front, but he's going to change. He's going to change. He's an, he's an icon of the fans and of the club. And he's my... Club captain, and it, things can only get better with him. So, hello, Payam. And last but not least, a goalkeeper who is pretty decent at that. Under 21, former international. He got the one cap. So, I've got my starting goalkeeper and my substitute goalkeeper. Both have the total of two caps between both of them for the under 21s. We picked him up from Galatasaray a couple of seasons ago where he was a bit part goalkeeper. One season he played 13 games, so he's not a bad goalkeeper. Ismail Sippy, 17 kicking. I mean, that's a big kick. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> and he's okay. Let's just say that. He's not the best goalkeeper in the world. But he's also, there's a lot worse out there. So I'm happy to have him on board. On to the tactics. And here we are. It's the Christmas pudding, everyone. And I'm very, 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 very happy to bring this over from Shelburne. Just a few tweaks. Just to make sure that everyone understands what it is. From Shelburne to Turkey to Osman Lisboa. The tweaks are... 
If you can remember, we had an attacking right midfielder up here, which was normally Ronaldo Williams or Jane Sonorazzo. We've pulled that back. We've got his right midfielder in at actually a right midfield position. But we've moved back one of our central midfielders and just got him just a bit more cover for the defence in this league. Lewis is still getting used to, obviously, the language barrier and all that kind of jazz and just getting to his new surroundings as well. But he's doing a decent job. In the first game, he did set up a goal, and I'll show you the schedule in a second. But this is what we're talking about this season. And like I said... The style is gag and press. We are going positive. We're going for more attacking this season. We've got three big strikers up front. We've got a strong midfield. We've got a decent defence. Not a bad goalkeeper. And I can't see where we can't go wrong, at least pushing. I think we get promotion. Uh, playoffs in this in this league. I need to actually double check the league and the rules. But I think we get the opportunity to be in a playoff at the end of the season. So this is the start of the season. And we are unbeaten, which is which is okay. I'm not going to lie. We have actually played four games this season already. We've only won one and we've drawn three, which is not too bad because at the end of last season, this is where I started and I didn't have the best time. And then we had a pretty de uh, decent end to the, like, to the end of the season. But as you can see, we didn't have the best season at all. Look at all those reds. That is ridiculous. So the team has not been used to winning. So to get this... I'm very happy with and that friendly the build-up was fantastic but anyway we started off the start of this season against a team called here at sun as whatever i say we're going with okay so i'm not going to repeat them anyway we went one nil up with this in this game with a manure mercan strike from outside the box they then got it one one after 81 minutes and then after 86 minutes they scored and i thought well this is ridiculous fm have completely fm me here but then we had Payam did get the equaliser to make it 2-2. And I talk about FM because we had 21 shots to their 11. And yeah, some people might say, yeah, 21-11, that's not... That's 10 shots more, okay? 10 shots more. I know 60% possession. We did not deserve to get a draw from this. But anyway, it doesn't matter. We did get a draw and we showed some spirit by getting that equaliser in the 92nd minute. We did follow that up, though, with a 3-2 victory against Yeni Matalaspo. Yep. It's another sport, and there's going to be more of them to come. This was a 3-0 half-time demolition job. And then in the second half, they did come back and score two in the second half. And it was a bit squeaky bomb, but we did hold on for the win. We then followed that up with a 1-1 draw again. Uh, Gazia uh, with a Mercan goal again. Manil Mercan did get on the score sheet again after 29 minutes, but they got us goal back very, very soon afterwards. And that's all she wrote really about that match. It wasn't the best game of football in the world. As you can see, no one made any key passes for them or anything. We did take most control of the game. Actually battered them. Actually battered them. I forgot about this. We did batter them. Couldn't get that second goal. And the problem is this season, I can feel, is that we haven't got the strike power up front to get those goals for us. I'm hoping that can change. So hopefully we might be able to get some goals out of these two up front. But at the moment, they're not firing on all cylinders. And this is what I'm talking about. We just finished the last game as well and it ended nil-nil. But it was away from home against that team. And I'm not going to try and pronounce that word. So we're just going to leave it. And it was nil-nil. Just having a quick look at the stats. We didn't play particularly very well in this match, so to get away with a nil-nil wasn't the worst uh, worst result in the world. And it, but it leads us on to our next game, and our next game is only a couple of days away, and it is against the Karaspor in the league at home. It's a Wednesday night under the lights, actually a five o'clock kickoff, which is a very weird time to have a game of football. Very breezy as well, apparently. And it's at our stadium. It's the Osmania Stadium. Is there anything else that we need to look at? I don't really think there is. Finances are absolutely through the absolute jumping basement. They are really bad. Before I actually go on to the next game, though, I do want to actually show you the league. We actually have played four games this season. We got six points, obviously, from the three, win uh, the three draws and the one win. So we're not doing too bad. And as you can see, there is a playoff system. There's actually a player system. So if we finish in the top six, we could either be automatically promoted or we can be going to a playoff system. So very, very good opportunity for us to get into the next division. So here we go. Game day is upon us. And these are actually down in the doldrums. They're 18th in the league, bottom of the table. This is a game that we should be winning today. This is the starting 11 that we're going to go with. Is Ismail Okan Veli Barros. We've got Anuk Okan Luis Manure in midfield with Al Alexi Aligi. And we've got Payam and we've got Saleski up front as well. 
We're going to go with Seleski up front. He's actually a decent player. He's Albanian international. He normally doesn't start because we can only put five foreigners in the starting 11. He normally sits on the bench, but today we're missing one of our foreigners. So he can actually come in and play. They are going for a 4-4-2. Is there anyone in there that actually jumps out? No, not at all. I don't know anyone. I'm not going to know anyone at this level of Turkish football. Uh, I'm going to encourage the players, absolutely. Uh, the assistant manager gives them a bit of encouragement. Then I come in and I individually tell the players, passionately say that I've got faith in them. They absolutely love it. So here we go. We get the game underway. We are starting off on positive. If things are not going great, I might move up to attacking because these are bottom of the league. We should be winning this game. Here we go though, nine minutes on the clock, it's Mineur puts it in there, it's headed away, Alexis is trying to get onto it, but it's, uh, he's beaten to it, and it's Abraham now that picks it up, he gives it to Kian, Kian knocks the ball into the middle, but Veli will win the header, but they get onto the second ball, Luis does really well, wins the ball back, comes forward, goes for the pass, it's Payano, comes in there, and it's a lovely ball in, and the keeper was in no man's land. And it's a big mistake from the centre half, apparently. But it's a lovely ball from Adam Lewis. And the Iranian international, the legend of the club, the icon, the fans' favourite, the captain, it's Payam who gets in there. I don't know what the, uh, the centre half's doing, but Payam comes in and says, Thank you very much. 1 0 to Osman Lespoor. Come on! <laughs> Here we go again. It's Adam Lewis who pops the ball to the box. There's Veli with the header, and he's headed over the top of the bar. Here we go. It's Ayuk to Okan. Okan to. M uh, manure. I'm just going to go in manure. So, like, manure. <laughs> he loses the ball, and they get the ball up to Abraham, though. And here comes Keenan. We haven't kept a clean sheet. Oh, yes, we have. We have kept one clean sheet this season. That was in the last game. Here comes manure, though, and he's bringing the ball forward. He gives the ball to Seleski. Seleski to Alexi Agur. He gives the ball out to Lewis, and there's Payam with the header. And it's 2-0, and he's on fire. And him and Adam Lewis are just starting to... Oh, I feel it. The spark's flying. They're getting a bit of chemistry between them. Adam Lewis with two assists already today. Lovely ball, bombing up that left-hand side. We've seen it so many times for Shelburne over the years, where he bombs up that left, he gets in the ball into the box, and it was not a shame Lively who was getting on the end of it. But this time, he's getting a new partnership with Payam. And it could be game over before we even know it here. The centre-halves are playing it amongst themselves. They're messing about with it too much. Are they going to get it away? Yes, they do. And they, these now come forward. And it's Sian, and he's got a massive chance. And he puts it a mile wide. What a miss that is. They're currently third in the league, so we're not doing too bad, actually. Five minutes before the break, and there's going to be a highlight for these guys. Um, it's Fayette. And Fayat, he gives the ball, but he's tackled. But he gets, uh, gets a bit of luck there. It falls to their lad. Kenan now comes back to... Um, it looked like Eminem, if I'm going to be honest with you. I was going to say Eminem. It goes to Abraham, and he shoots to Abraham Allen, and it flies into the bottom corner. And that's what I'm just talking about, this team. A bit of lack of concentration. Not the best from them. And, we, yeah, we always concede a goal. Yeah. It's a nice finish, though. I will give him that. He does flash it into the bottom corner, and our fans are non-existent. They've got a big following today, then, lot, and we've got... I'm actually going to go out and win and probably say that they brought more fans than us. I'm going to go into the break, though, now, and I think that should be that. The referee should blow any second now, and I think he will. Yes, he does. And we have completely dominated so far, but the score line does not show our domination. It's only two goals to one. Uh, I'm not going to tell them to get com uh, don't get complacent because that just puts a bit of worry into them. Uh, you're doing well. I know that you can do better. Absolutely. And then come back in again. And I think a bit of passion. Uh, you weren't that bad out there. Go out there and make the difference. Absolutely. Can we get another goal? That's the question. Adam Lewis on a 67 fitness. 66 now. Anyway, here we go. We're playing it out from the back. It's Veli. Veli to Okan. And Okan now back to Veli. Gives it to Sagman in the middle to Alexi Allegi. Uh, he's tackled, but it does fall to Mignor. Mignor is looking for Adam Lewis, and he finds him beautifully. He puts the ball into the box. It's Seleski trying to get in there, but he's beaten to it by the defender. And these guys can now break. Baris does really well. He gives it to Mignor. Mignor now running the show in the middle of the park. Gives it to Veli at the centre back. He pumps the ball forward, but it's not the best ball. Eminem does get it away, but it falls to Lewis. Lewis now on this left hand side brings it forward, puts the ball into the box. It's headed back, and there's Payan. It's a absolute worldy i was just about to say that he's just got his hat trick but it's an absolute worldy from the goalkeeper to keep that one out and tips it onto the bar unbelievable stuff 
I'm just trying to think here. Should I even change the field? But there's Adam Lewis is struggling out there. He's on 57%, but have we even got anyone on the bench catch can fit into his position? I don't actually think we have. Um, there's 10 minutes to go. I'm, I'm really reluctant to change anything. They've done nothing in the second half. They get the ball forward, but goes to absolutely no one. It comes Veli to Ocan. Ocan back to Veli. Veli now coming forward to Barris. Barris back to Veli. Veli gives the ball away, but we jump on the second ball. It's Mignot now coming forward. He's going to give it to, and it's Ayuk. Oh, and it's a big save again from the goalkeeper, and he's keeping him in this game. We should be out of sight by now. It's only 2-1. Lewis was puppet in there, but it goes over everyone's head, and I think that's going to be the end of the highlight. I really do, and it is. I'm not going to change anything, and here they come. They've whacked it against the crossbar. Is he going to put it in the back of the net? No, he's offside. Oh, my days. Unbelievable stuff. My heart nearly sank for a second, and that is it. It is all over, and it's a winning start for us. For us, as a family, you guys watching it, watching me play, Osman Lisboa gets the win, and Mike Bassett is still unbeaten this season. Unbeaten this season for the new club. Well done, boys. A let, off, let off, I did say, to some of the lads today. I, I'm going to actually say that, because they did smash the crossbar, and nearly did get the winner. Uh, not the winner, but the equaliser that's saying that. Payam did did really well. And we're doing so well so far. We're not doing too bad. Let's just have a look at the league. This is us. Half the other teams have still got to play. But this is where we are at the moment. And this is where you're going to leave me. We're in fourth position as we speak. And only two, plays, uh, two points off the top of the table. We're sitting in fourth. And not doing too shabby. Let's just say that. I'm going to skip on for at least 10 games. There's no real teams in this league for me to get excited about. So we're going to play 10 games. And then we're going to come back for the next episode. And then we're going to play 10 games while I'll come back for the next episode. 10 games while I'll come back for the episode. And see where we get for the business end of the season. Hopefully we can keep up this kind of form. And we will be around the top end of the table. And not in the middle like we were last season. If you've enjoyed this episode as much as I have, give it a thumbs up, give it a like at the bottom of the page. Tell your friends, tell your family, and then they'll tell more people. And then that's how it works, word of mouth kind of thing. Also, go and subscribe to my page on YouTube at Captain Birdie Man FM. And if you're on Twitter as well, go and follow me at Captain Birdie Man FM. And also, if you want to get yourselves involved in a football manager community, go and follow these guys at FM Creators and join the Discord channel as well. Ah, oh, you know the drill, everyone. I will see you in a couple of days' time for another episode of Mike Bassett Manager. Can't get my words out. Bye-bye.